Welcome to the Optimistic M. I'm your host, Michelle. And, well, I have some news for you, actually. About a week ago, I just found out that they're selling the house that we're renting out. Like everyone, even the top floor. So they're probably wondering, what next? Well, don't fret. If you're ever in a situation like this, and we do have time. We have until about August to find a new place, which sucks because I probably move on average at least one and a half, well, once every one and a half years, almost every year. But this is probably the, the longest I've been here. I've been here for about a year. Let's see, I got here late December 2015 after I came back from Australia and then so almost a year and a half. So I'm about to break the average. So if you're ever in a situation like this, don't fret. I've gotten kind of accustomed to this because I have moved so much, it does suck. So I decided it was the best thing to do is get a private mailbox. Not a post office box because that is a USPS thing. I wanna be able to get all my mail in one place. And so that's what I've been doing for over two years now. And it's worked out in my favor. Just a tip, if you are one of those people that move a lot constantly but live in the same area, get a private mailbox. It's not that bad. I think it's on average, I pay about a hundred some dollars every three months. It's a little over three dollars a month. So it's not too bad at all. To the main issue here. So I'm I'm basing this off one, my experience. And two, I looked up this article, I was looking up articles of like uh, the best way to find places or whatever. So I'm basing it off of one of these articles on moneycrashers.com called this how to find the perfect apartment for rent. Basically a guide, as you will. I'm going to go through the guide, I'm going to give you bits and pieces of things I looked over as well as from my experience to best help you find your next place. The most important thing, number one on the list, there's a total of 10 tips on here. Most of these I know about, some of them I don't. I'm gonna go mostly over the ones I do, but I will mention the ones that are also on here as well. Most important one of all is determine your affordability. So, unless you know how much you're willing to pay, how much you need to cash out, and it's not gonna help when it, once you do the search, and I normally, I use, there's different apps, different places you can go. I use Craigslist for the most part. It's much easier, especially if you're a student, even a professional looking for a place either short term or long term. It's extremely helpful. Determine how much you can first pay out. And that includes not only the rent. There's people here looking at the place, by the way. It's an open house. I think we're only doing one open house that we agreed to anyways. Hopefully only one. So unless you know how much you can shell out for not only rent, but security deposit. And most places I've realized around here don't do last month's rent, but they will do first and then security deposit. So I've seen that most of the time. I haven't seen last month, but it's also something to consider. And I'll talk more about that later. Lower your rental costs. How can you do that? Well, one of the things you can do is search for places that are in areas that they have reasonable rates for instance i know in hawaii for example if you're living in waikiki for example you're going to be you're going to be paying a lot more versus say you live in kaimuki which is, isn't that far from waikiki so this is a perfect example or or if you are looking at the north side for example kaneohe area it's usually cheaper over there because it's less urban for it's that's the most important part it's less urban less city on oh yeah also why and i why is also another good spot but this just for hawaii but it, this applies anywhere if you're looking for a place that's in a less urban area it's usually less for the rent other things you have to consider is transportation costs is it going to cost you say gas to drive 10 miles every day for, uh, back and forth from work or whatever is it gonna well uh, you also have to consider about time so if you don't drive take the bus you have to consider well how long does it take for you to get from point A to point B and are you willing to do this every day as I know from my experience 
I've lived in places where it would take me about two hours to get to, say, my reserve duty. Uh, something I do every month. That used to take me, well, uh, it wouldn't take me two hours, but it would take me at least about an hour and 30 minutes most days. So that's something I have to consider. And how many buses? How many buses will it take you to get there? And are you willing to take those many buses every day? Some people are. I'm not. I only want to take one bus. Fortunately, I was most of the time, I only needed to take one bus to get to where I need to go. Right now, I drive, so I don't need to really consider buses. But every now and then, I do take the bus to get to places that are, say, downtown, for example. Roommates. If you're going to a place that has a few rooms, one of the biggest things, and especially in Hawaii, because the prices are high, is consider uh, finding roommates or consider having roommates because it's unless you can't afford to have a place that you can pay say a thousand dollars for by yourself and some people can then consider getting a roommate and I would say there's also room share unless you are willing to sacrifice your privacy and I've done this once before I will never do it again but if you are say in a jam if you're hurting then you can consider room sharing this is when actually you actually share a room with a person and of course if it's temporary then couch surfing is another option I have a friend that's actually done couch surfing before because it was a temporary thing he came out here for work and couch surfing was one of those things it's like it's actually a thing you can find online checking for subsidies I don't know much about this part but I do you know it has something to do with HUD, H-U-D? I know a few years ago I was strapped for cash. And if you're in Hawaii, I'm gonna tell you this right now, there's a, there's a long list, there's a very, very long list of getting quote unquote section eight housing. The rates are very, very good because they're subsidized by the government. So that's, that's another option. Again, I don't know much about it, but it's something you can, you can consider if you're really strapped for cash think small so when i say think small think about square footage usually there's a cost for every square footage i don't know the amount per square footage for this place off the top of my head but when we had signed well before we had signed the application and looked over the things it was about it said such and such for every so much square foot and as a quote-unquote room manager one of the things I had to decide was how much to charge or how much everybody, my roommates, and including myself, would be paying for each of the rooms. There's a set price, and the landlord didn't really care how much each of the rooms would go for. He just cared that he was getting the total amount. So if you're ever put in a situation where you're kind of in charge, like a room house manager, then that's something you can, you can consider and then you can actually kind of negotiate the price between well you because there's nobody else to negotiate with in my situation I was looking for roommates to fill the rooms, so I had the option and basically I didn't really change the prices that much I think I altered the smallest one because it was actually the smallest, the smallest room and I was actually paying that amount then I moved to the next room I was kind of going back and forth between the, the the rates. Anyways, that's something you can consider. Add renter's insurance. Uh, that's number three on the list here. I, I'm, again, I'm not really sure because I don't have that type of insurance. I do know it's relatively cheap. And if you are renting a place, you can. It's be, it's a it's a good a great benefit. Say if something happened, like the place burned down or whatever. So looking into that, uh, there's various companies out there. I'm not gonna rep anything. But because uh, I don't have it personally, so but I am looking into it. So that's something to, to also consider. Run a credit check. More often than not, you're probably gonna run into a landlord that's gonna ask for a credit check. So it's best to do your own. They're gonna probably do yours. They're probably gonna do a credit check for you. But if they don't, you're gonna have to do it yourself. And you can do it for free. I have to search for a resource, but I'll let you know. If, um, there are various places you can do it. Some credit cards do it for free now. I've noticed a lot of them are doing it now. So that's something you can check out. 
And that's also going to be important when you're applying for a place. If you're not renting from a landlord directly, you're going to be renting from a rental agency. In which case, this is going to be even more important. And I've done this once. Something you should really consider if you're going to go the rental agency way versus, say, renting from person to person. Either way, you may have to do it, so I would highly consider just finding a free place to do it. You can pay for it, but you can also do it for free. As far as an annual credit check, you can get a credit check for free, once a year. Start your search. So after you figure out, of course, your affordability, how much you can actually pay for a place, start your search and you're gonna to want to start it at least three months out if you have that much time I have more than three months right now. personally myself I have until August so it's more than enough time so I'm probably not gonna search that far out but I will be just kind of like searching searching the area to see if anyone's actually gonna post anything a little bit far out than normal like cause sometimes you go on Craigslist and they'll say well the place isn't available to such and such time in which case you can kind of plan accordingly for it. Things to consider in your search, of course, is the price, as I mentioned earlier. Transportation, are you taking a bus, are you driving? How much is it gonna cost? Especially school students. Biggest thing, if you don't drive and you take the bus, uh, are there close, are there bus lines close by? And are they gonna get you to where you need to go? How many buses does it take, etc., etc. I actually had to do this this is, I have to apply this because when I went to Australia, for example, I was actually concerned about the transportation. I had researched on the university site and there were actually bus lines pretty close. I just didn't know the distance. So, cause you're looking at maps, right? And despite the fact that maps kind of look all the same, if you think about it, but if you've never been to a place before, then you don't really know the distance. I mean, it'll say off to the side, oh, this is uh, such and such, like one inch is su such and such, like a mile or something. But until you actually see the place with your own eyes, which was my issue, because I had never been to Australia or the Gold Coast. So I can only say, well, there's a bus line nearby, but the place where I was looking kind of looks kind of far away. Or the distance from the university from my place I was looking at, sounds kind of far. But once I got on the ground, everything worked out. There was a bus I took, and there was also a train. And both were very quick. Uh, there was very little traffic, so that worked out. But just things to think about. Considering transportation in general, it's something very, very important to think about, when, whether you're going to school, work, or whatever. Convenience. Again, how many buses are you taking to where you're going? Is it far? Do you gotta walk? Are there any stores around? Any shops, restaurants, that sort of thing? Things to consider. Especially if this is your first time. I wish I had a guy like this when I was doing my search. And I still have to tell people like, hey, you know, Craigslist is a great resource as far as looking, but this will help you with that search so it's not you're you're not you're not alone you're not by yourself this this guide that i'm giving you is going to help you through the process so i hope this helps another thing is safety wherever you are in the world wherever city you're looking at this video from safety is probably going to be especially if you're a female not say anything not say anything but this is especially true for females. Safety is paramount. Safety and security is paramount. I'm a guy and safety and security is still very important because I don't want to live in a bad neighborhood. I don't want to, I want to have peace of mind basically once I go home or even when I'm walking around. I want to be able to walk around without having to worry about if I'm going to get mugged or whatever. Save up for the down payment. I know this is <laughs> I've had to go through this I'm okay now because I I'm renting a place right now and I have a security deposit unless for some reason the security like something gets jacked up in the house you may not get that security deposit back so something you really should consider and this 
goes back to affordability is saving up for a down payment, such as you're going to need rent, usually going to need the first month's rent, and almost always you're going to need a security deposit. There are very, very rare occasions where I've seen the security deposit actually was waived or wasn't needed, but I would say that 80% of the time, even 90% of the time, you're going to need a security deposit, and that's, you're not going to really need it until you sign the lease, but you're going to need it. So that should always be something that needs to be in your bank account before you make any moves, otherwise it's, it's going to slow down your process. I've never run into a place where I've needed my last month's rent. If anything, first month's rent, security deposit, are going to be the top two things you're going to need. And I'll give you an example. So let's say the rent is $700 a month. And more often than not, the security deposit is going to be the same. So we're looking at already $1,400. So you're gonna to need to save up that much to secure one, the place, get the keys, and sign the lease. Then you're good. Now if you have last month's rent, then that's gonna be a little bit more, it's gonna be 2100. And <laughs> I, I hope that you don't have to pay that because that's, that's a very lot. I mean, I know for Hawaii already, it's already a lot just to get the, both the first month and a security deposit. If you're already renting a place, for example, and you know that you've kept the place pretty tidy you haven't broken anything then you're pretty much pretty much gonna get that back so unless you have shady landlords and unfortunately I have have friends that have run into shady landlords and haven't gotten anything back like I'm talking about zero and the landlord for some reason they find reasons to keep your security deposits oh it's a $25 light bulb like are you kidding me so you do have to consider that and I'll, I will get to that later in regards to landlords but keep in mind you're gonna need that to make that down payment prepare documents is number seven so besides the application you got to fill that out uh, you're gonna need the letter of employment some a lot of places especially rental agencies are gonna need to know that you're actually working that you're actually making money the worst thing for them is to have a liability and you can't pay the bills and then there's a lawsuit and you, you don't want to go through all this stuff so have all this stuff ready to go letter of employment I don't think I've ever had to write a letter of employment but I have needed pay stubs reference letters Man, I've never had to give my tax return but it, it was on the list so something to consider so make sure you have those documents readies and they'll normally they'll give you a list of things you need for the application process this is all part of the application so you can't finish the application unless you have all these things talk to tenants this is actually my one of my favorite parts so you can actually say well talk to tenants or prospective roommates so prior to moving in more often than not you're probably gonna have a roommate that's gonna be staying there talk to this person and talk to the other tenants just to see, you know, hey, what's going on? Because the landlord's gonna do their job, they're gonna interview you, they're gonna find out who you are, if you have a job, etc. etc. Another important thing is you know, find out what's what, find out if the landlord's a jerk or whatever, find out if he's a cool guy. Um when I got into this place that I'm staying right now, I talked to my prospective roommates because the room was already vacant, so that that person had already moved out. So I talked to them and they just told me different things about the area. There was different stores and of course I did a little bit of research. I knew about the area already. I was kind of stoked already. So they just told me a little bit about the landlord. The landlord was cool. He actually is a cool guy. And that's probably the most important thing about this process is knowing who your landlord is. Are, are they quick to fix stuff? Are they slow? Are they jerking you around? Just find out through your prospective roommates and tenants. Before you sign anything, do a walkthrough. I made this mistake myself once, and I'll probably never do it again. The one place was horrible. And when I say horrible, I'm talking, so I did the initial walkthrough. I just walked through, looked at the rooms, the kitchen and bathroom, and you know, everything was cool. If you're going through in the daytime, and 
this is especially if you live in Hawaii or places where you know there are these freaking water bugs. I, they're cockroaches, but most of the time they're not going to come out in the daytime. However, you can do your due, due diligence, go through drawers if you can, go through cabinets, you know, see if there's any droppings. So I made this mistake, I didn't do that in a place and I, I was kind of strapped for time I was running out of time anyways and I was like screw it whatever I ended up so the place had so many cockroaches it was freaking ridiculous it was just, it was the grossest thing like I would I'm telling you do your do your job do your do <laughs> I can't talk today do your due diligence and make sure you're you're going to a place where you're not gonna have to worry about infestations and and other things and depending on the area also something very important to consider is is there a breeze does it get hot during the day that same place I was telling you about was like a freaking furnace and it would take hours to cool off because it's all bricks right it's all bricks it would take forever to cool off so it was hot as hell so do your job and it'll make your life much easier and last but not least read and sign the lease and of course for that you're gonna need a security deposit most of the time there are many other things to consider I hope everyone's enjoyed and learned something from this as I have through my experience renting places looking for places looking for prospective roommates uh, especially if you're a student, this is even more important because more often than not, you're fresh, you know, you're fresh out of high school. You may even be an adult student, and we still have. A, I'm an adult student, or I was an adult student, and I had to do the same thing here and when I was going to Australia. So, for example, when I was going to Australia, I, I couldn't be there. I couldn't see the place, uh, so I had to ba basically go on faith and just emails back and forth they would tell me about the prospective roommates and the area stuff like that and that's the only thing I could go on it's ballsy it's risky don't do not ever if you can help it send money without anything like without any kind of signage or anything even then be careful there are scams I've seen a few scams and I came this close to making a mistake and sending money for a scam they'll say oh you you have to send like so much money and we'll send you the keys etc etc just look out for that sort of thing Craigslist is a great tool however there are scams like that you have to look for and most of the time people will point them out and make an alert but if they don't just don't send any money until you see somebody face to face or there's some sort of correspondence there's got to be something unless you trust and <laughs> trust is hard when you haven't been there you haven't met the person but when I was coming actually back from Australia the only thing I could do was Skype uh, for the place I'm standing at right now I can only Skype my prospective roommates and that's how we kind of interviewed they that's how they kind of interviewed me just see how I was so something to consider if you can't be at a place before say you need to be there Skype hangouts whatever to get the job done so you can find out about your roommates tenants whatever we have a lot of awesome tools so use them and of course be safe I hope everyone learned everything. I I hope you learned something today because I did throughout my experience. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of my roommate series. And there are more to come, believe it or not. I'm finding more and more things I can do with this series. So stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for other videos that are coming as well. I haven't forgotten. But this situation kind of came up on me suddenly. So this is a prime example of taking action. Now, unfortunately, my roommates upstairs, they don't have as much time as I have. They haven't to me to find a new place. 
So that brings me to another important subject is know your rights. And so far, my landlord is following the laws and the rules and everything like that. And so we're all good. Basically, we're here until the lease runs out and then there's a possibility of us staying if the new owner allows us to stay. But then that also involves a new lease and the prices may go up and et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, so that's, that's something I'm going through right now and I want to share that as well as give you some tips on looking for a new place. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Definitely stay tuned. As always, thank you for your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see and hear. And share if you think somebody else will benefit from this. Definitely and definitely liking. And of course, if you have any comments or feedback you'd like to add as far as your experience goes with renting and looking for places, please by all means put it below. And uh, tell me what you think. Tell everybody your experience. And if I miss anything, uh, of course, I'm sure I did. So stay tuned for the next episode and cheers. Oh, 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 oh,